Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 33, Deploy to AWS EC2, Part 3, Launch EC2, and Install Ruby with RVM. In this episode, you'll learn how to launch an EC2 Ubuntu instance from the AWS console. You'll SSH into the server using that PEM file that we created in the previous episode. We'll set up unattended upgrades, we'll create our deploy user, and we'll install Ruby with RVM. If you want to code along, you'll need an Amazon account set up with an IM user. You can go to RubySnack31 to see how to do that. And you'll need a key pair and security group set up. You can check out RubySnack32 number for that process. All right, after two setup episodes, we are going to launch our EC2. Let's sign in as our IM user. Then we'll open the Amazon EC2 console. We'll click Launch Instance. We'll choose an AMI. That's the initials for an Amazon machine image. They have loads of options for you, even on the free plan. I'm going to choose Ubuntu because that's what I'm familiar with. I also did a little bit of research, and the vast majority of people are still using Ubuntu for their web servers and not the Amazon Linux AMI that comes first on the list. I'm going to choose just the tiniest instance since I don't need very much for this tutorial. We don't need to change a lot of the settings, but we do need to select the security group that we made. We'll click review and launch and then launch again. And then you'll choose your existing key pair. You must have a key pair when you launch your server or you won't be able to get into it. And then we'll click view instances to get out of the wizard. Here we are on the page to sign in as your IM user. And that brings us directly to the console. Let's click on EC2 to bring us to that console. Now let's launch that instance. All right, we need to scroll down to find Ubuntu and select. And it gives you the option for the free tier. Now let's edit the security group and choose the one that we made in the previous episode. Now we'll review and launch. And you see there it has those security warnings. That's because we set it up to have SSH available from any IP address. Let's just check out the other information. All of that can stay the same. So let's launch. Now let's choose that PEM and agree to their conditions and launch the instance. So it takes a few minutes to set up, so it directs you to some other information you want to check out. But let's go ahead and exit the wizard. And here we are on the main page. There's a notification that comes up right now. You can X out of that and wait for your instance to be ready. When it's ready, you'll see a listing of the public DNS name of the instance. So you'll copy that and you'll use the SSH command to connect to the instance. You'll use Ubuntu as the user for now if you install the Ubuntu AMI. I'll link to the documentation for this section at the end of the episode in case you chose a different AMI. Note that the SSH has a dash I, which means the identifier, the path to your PEM file, Ubuntu, at, and then that public DNS. So here's an example. This is what I'm using. The SSHI to my Melissa Key Pair US West at Ubuntu, and then the big long name for the public DNS. I've already copy-pasted this command into my terminal. I'll hit enter, and here we are. We're inside of the instance, and it looks like a regular Ubuntu server. This is not part of the main AWS documentation, but I do recommend you go ahead and set up a deploy user when using Ubuntu because you don't want to set up your web services as the root of that server. It is a little bit different setting up a deploy user on AWS, so follow along. First, as usual, we will add a deploy user with sudo add user deploy. Then I say yes, have a password. It's really funny, the Amazon documentation shows you how to add a user without a password, even though Amazon is all about the passwords and all about the security. I found that to be interesting. Anyway, I say go ahead, add another password. Then we'll add deploy to the sudo group. And then this is where it differs. We're going to switch to the deploy user right away. Then we're gonna create an SSH directory. 
We're gonna change the file permissions so that nobody can mess with it. Then we're gonna make an authorized keys file and then change that permission so nobody messes with it. Finally, we'll edit the authorized key file with your favorite text editor, I'm suggesting Nano, and paste the public key for your key pair into the file. So whatever you usually use to SSH into servers, use that. If you watched my Deploy to Digital Ocean series, this was actually done for you when you included your key during the initial setup of the droplet. For AWS, you need to go into the instance and set it up manually. Back in our terminal, let's go ahead and create that deploy user. Oops, I added the dollar sign, don't need that, and enter. Now I will put in that password and put it in again. There we go. Now you can put whatever you want here. I'm just going to put my first name, get through the rest of it. And yes. Great. Now let's add that user to the pseudo group. So it has all the privileges it needs. Now let's go into that deploy user. See now that we're deploy at IP address. We're making the SSH folders, changing the permissions, making that file, changing that permission. Now let's open that up. Now I'm not going to show you my key, but this is where you'd put it. So we've done that. Now we're going to exit deploy and exit Ubuntu. So we're now out of that server. Now we're going to check to make sure it's working correctly. So let's go back and SSH in as the deploy user. And we're in. As with any Ubuntu server, we need to install unattended upgrades to make sure that all of the security updates that come free with Ubuntu are installed on our server. So we'll just update the package lists with sudo apt-get update. Then just in case it's not installed, let's sudo apt-get install unattended upgrades. Then we'll enable the program. Just for reference, here are the commands to update the non-security upgrades. Let's go ahead and paste in those commands so we can get that set up. And it's updating our packages. Now let's make sure we have unattended upgrades, and we do. Now let's enable unattended upgrades, and we'll just move over to yes, and then enter. And there we go. In the Deploy to Digital Ocean series, I installed Ruby from source, so I thought this time I'd give you a different option. This time we'll install Ruby with RVM. First, we need to install RVM by adding this key. Then we install RVM with this command that also installs a fairly current Ruby. You could always install a different version of Ruby if you need to. In my case, it installed a version that I had used with the app I was using for this tutorial. Back in our terminal, let's paste in the command to add that key. And it does that. Now let's paste in the command to install RVM and a current Ruby. With the magic of editing, I'm going to speed this up quite a bit. It's going to install Ruby 2.3.0, which is all that I needed. And there we go, it actually takes a little longer. Now it does have one more command that you need to run. So let's go ahead and copy that, paste that in so that our current terminal will be using the correct Ruby. And we see our VM list, and it shows that, yes, we're using Ruby 2.3.0. We have just a few more things for this episode. We're going to install Git and Bundler. We need to install Git separately because we installed Ruby with RVM, and my copy-paste code to install Ruby from source actually includes Git. So we'll do it separately for this case. Then, of course, we need to install Bundler separately so that when we run our Capistrano tasks, it can bundle install all of our gems. One more time in our terminal, let's copy-paste to install Git. And, oh, it's been a minute, so it needed a password. So it's installing Git. Now we need to gem install bundler. Now, actually, I had forgotten to do this, and so I needed to come back in. You see, I've come back into the server in this case, but now we've installed bundler, so we can bundle. 
you will need to install other software. And even though I railed on Amazon for creating documentation that led to other documentation, I'm going to be a little bit guilty of it right here. I'm going to point you in the direction of a Ruby snack for Deploy to DigitalOcean that already took you through the process of adding a database software, in that case Postgres, but you could install MySQL if you were doing that, Image Magic if you have images in your app, Passenger, and a Apache. Do note, though, that in the next episode, we'll be setting up AWS RDS, so that's a separate database server, so no need to set up the database if you're setting up an RDS. You do still need to install the software, though, for Rails to use in order to save those records on the external RDS. Here are the resources that I used to put together the tutorial from Amazon. You can check those out, read some other ways to do it. And that's it. That wraps up this episode of Ruby Thursday. To be sure you don't miss the next episode where we set up RDS, click on that big red Ruby to take you over to rubythursday.com so you can sign up for my mailing list. If you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can click that red button right there to do so. If you have any questions at all, there's a lot in this episode, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.